Hello, I'm Sister Lisa Peter, and I'm coming to you today on June 18, 2017 from Hazelwood, USA. And the topic of my devotional is Be Content. Be happy. My topic today makes me think of my Grandma Kelly. She lived in a two-bedroom mobile home, and she didn't really have much in the way of material things, worldly goods. But she knew how to be content. She was always so thankful, and she told me one time, we may have not have lived like other people, but we always had something to eat and a roof over our heads. She knew. She knew that the key to happiness was being content with what God had given her. She was so thankful for Jesus and for having received the Holy Ghost. She loved serving God and going to church and reading the Bible. She was a real light, a witness, and my mentor. Thank you, Grandma, for that heritage, that legacy. In the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, 1 Timothy 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know, God does give us blessings. He pours us out blessings we cannot contain. And sometimes it is financial, but it's because He gives them to us. It's not that we seek after them. It's not that we just try and try and try to give them. Because, you know, if we covet those things, it causes many sorrows. We've got to be content. Jeremiah 3 and 24 says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in Him. Proverbs 38-9 through 9 says, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Proverbs... Oh, I'm still on that one. Lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still, and take the name of my God in vain. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. You know, we're laying it for ourselves treasures in heaven. You know, the things that we do in obedience to God, we don't know, but it's laying up treasure in heaven. I wrote this poem this last week called Be You. Some are born with natural ability, talents that far exceed and excel. But it isn't that they are special or superior. It is the same God who created the audience and the performer too. Some are leaders, some are followers, some are exceptional, some are ordinary, some are carbon copies, some are originals. The bottom line, be you. And what I mean by that, there is really no carbon copies, but there's like some people that seem like they, you know, they fit certain molds and stuff. But no matter who you are, be yourself and be content, be happy with who you are in the way that God had made you. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. See, that person that you don't like about yourself, see, you can change in this. You become a new creature when you're born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in that, when you're born again and you're following after the things of God and you're obedient in His plans, then you know, you have a reason, you know, to be happy in life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Second Corinthians 6 and 4 through 10. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and pain by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 2 Corinthians 7 and 10 says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, 
not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The gospel message that I must always share is, share is that preached by Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost. When the church was first born, the whole gospel to the whole world, Matthew 28, 19, that's when global mission started. When Jesus told the disciples to go into all the world, to every race, to every nation, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 12, etc., where the Holy Ghost was being poured out upon the Jews, upon the Samaritans, upon the Gentiles. Acts 2, 36 and 39, when there was Jews out of every nation that had gathered there, and they, um, they'd come to see what was happening in the upper room when the Holy Ghost was being poured out. And Peter is say, uh, saying to them, in verses 36 through 39. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Second Corinthians 9-6 through six says, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So you know when you give unto the Lord, you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. It is my desire to sow bountifully. In whatever area God chooses to allow me to use my skill sets, whatever open door to reach out and share Jesus with the world. Whether it be through my puppets, I have puppets right here, through my sign language, through my singing and playing music, through my devotionals, whatever it is, I want to be that light. I want to be that person that God can speak through and that you can find a church in your area that preaches truth. You can find one on, under resources on the United Pentecostal Church International website. It's upci.org. You can find out more about my husband and I at hazelwoodusa.weebly.com and our thenpetersaid.wordpress.com and we have playlist on the YouTube channel under um, on youtube.com under the Mark Peter channel. It's it's the one that looks like tree. It looks it looks like guitar made out of trees. You have to scroll quite a ways down. It's blue and has trees that look like a guitar. That's our playlist. Uh, that's our channel. And we do not debate, argue, or compromise the gospel. Ephesians 4 and 15, but speak in the truth in love. And that's what we want to do. We want to come to you every week and tell you about the goodness of Jesus. We have some books here that we've been looking through. Talking about being content. Everything is going to be all right. My sister Mona Freeman talks about her husband. They called him Bug. It's kind of got a glare on it, I know. We have a book here called Grace for the Moment. It's a devotional. And it's by Max Licato. There's, it says volume one. That's the only volume I have. But it's a very good book out of the Edwin Elder Library that we have. And I'm still reading on the one about the Pentecostals um, that, I, that I've been reading from a couple weeks ago. I have it written in here somewhere. Um, the Early Pentecostal Revival. And there was something that I read in there on page 141. I'm just a little bit past that now, but it says, The keen burden for souls possessed by men and women in the United States who were newly baptized was no less than phenomenal. There seemed to be little, if any, hesitation on the part of many of these converts to leave everything behind to spread the gospel of the Spirit as received by the 120 in the upper room. They were getting the same experience as, the, as that happened. See our tongues of fire here? What happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Their efforts were, by many standards, small, frail, and feeble attempts to take their doctrine around the world. But the results seem incredible in light of the lack of serious organization, the limits of travel and communication, and the lack of financial stability within the ranks of most saints. Yet from a small storefront in Los Angeles, the Azusa Street Revival, eventually the entire world, world would be evangelized, evangelized, promoting the way of Pentecost. And you know, that's what you might think today. You might think, well, I can't do much. I'm just a small little, I'm just a little small person. I can't do much. I have, I don't have any great skill sets. I'm not very talented. I don't have the, the platform. I don't have the means. But, you know, we all have the Internet. We have the Internet. And if, you know, if you can touch one life through the Internet or go across the street and touch one of your neighbor's lives, go to the nursing home and sing, touch lives there. Be what you can. Be a friend to somebody. Reach out and touch someone. 
it all works out for the kingdom of God. Well, I hope this devotional has spoken into your life today. May you be greatly blessed. And we have a little song here that we want to sing. It's called, He's All I Need. Sorry for that loud static in the background. today. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Happy Father's Day to all the men that are fathers. Amen.